www.lidostech.com. Lidos Professional Rugby has finally come to the district, and Lidos is honored to support Old Glory DC. Cuisine Solutions, proud to be the presenting partner of Old Glory DC and support the rugby community across the globe. The Supply Room, visit thesupplyroom.com to learn how to create a smarter office. Hey, Colin, we've got some statistics to look at from that first half, that exciting first half. Let's go ahead and look at this possession, 50-50. Territory pretty much the same. We had tackles made, that's a big difference there. 82 by Old Glory, 64 by Chicago. And winning those line outs at the line of touch, it's huge for that set piece battle. But that possession game, when we talk about turning territory and possession into points, it's absolutely obvious right now. We saw it last night with the Toronto and ATL game where Toronto had most of the possession and territory but you've got to get into the, the other team's end, and you've got to go ahead and get points on that scoreboard. Thanks to RTIC for those halftime stats as Luke Cardi gets us underway. Chicago in white, Old Glory DC in the red, white, and blue. And a nice counter kick, but taken by the steady Matina. He throws a skip pass. Time, three's got to go, three's got to go. To Cardi. Oh, wow. A nice shifty play by Diaz Benia to buy himself some extra time for that kick. And a good kick chase just overrun by Fermin Martinez. There's Bavaro who had a try earlier. And now DC deep into Chicago territory. Remember, Chicago still down a player from that sin bin. There's just a little bit of time left on that. But Old Glory capitalizing on that yellow card to beat him. Meantime, back to live play. Here comes Old Glory, smelling blood. Oh, wow. What a hit from Abel coming up. And desperate times for Chicago. If they, gotta, if they wanna stay in this one, they cannot afford to give up a try here. Diaz Benia going to the far side to Debulis, but it's coming back. Yeah, when you've got that free one advantage, you can go ahead and try something off the cuff and that kick pass is going too long but not a bad option if you've got the foot like Diaz Bonilla but we talk about how that opportunity opened up from Old Glory the high ball kick from Chicago when you hit that thing in the air and it goes too far and you don't get a chase going on you give that kicker that receiver the opportunity to find some space in the backfield which Old Glory did it hit the deck the chase was there on the outside and they got that got that ball back and now they've got a great attacking platform line out just at the five meter and that's that's those little kicking exchange moments the technicalities that you got to hone in all right so Beecham the vice captain trots back onto the pitch the big number six and that's a key element here because you just went for the corner rather than go for the point so you're going for the jugular right now if you're Josh Sims and Co of Old Glory Falls in, Stan South takes it. One, Stanley, one! Back of that. Driving ball is try scorer Sushin. He takes it to the ground. It's Caro, who's been a physical presence. Oh, and he just took a hit, a big hit from Mac Jones. Shoulder to the head, it looked like, but no, play on. Stan South. To Satala, to just, just to Carroll, is Carroll just <laughs> smashing into people. Absolute wrecking ball. Both sides of the ball, Colin. Jack Clark smiling someplace for Callan. No, oh. the second effort, and is it, is it Kurt Baker? Is it, yes it is, Kurt Baker, the try maker. Brilliant Baker with his first try in Major League Rugby for Old Glory, and there's the smiling assassin, you've seen it. On the World 7 Series circuit, almost every try this score this guy makes, and he scores, he smiled like that afterwards. He truly finds so much joy in this game. But let's go back to the line-out. Great throw in the middle of the line-out, and that stands south right in the middle. They go ahead and weather this good push in the mall from Chicago, breaking out to the right there, supports over the top, and DC just goes to work. I mean, you see the big man in the scarrow. He gets the ball twice after that line out, just at pace, getting some good go for it for DC. And they can attack on either side and just the ball comes out to the left and a pass back inside. Baker trailing behind that rock and usually you find a little bit of a half gap and he's just super sneaky and finds something, a little bit of space 
reaches over and dots that ball down. But that's that trailer on the back side of that ruck that could be so dangerous, and you can hide him behind that. And a great job by DC starting the second half just like they started the first half on fire. Yeah, no complacency, still has that urgency. And even though they were even side, they just dominated to get that try in. And now they are with the ball again, and it's desperate times for Chicago. Here's Diaz Benitez, Benia, with the kick into touch. And Chicago, I mean, quite obviously, you need something right now. Yeah, they've got to go ahead and figure out, like we saw those statistics there at halftime. You know, pretty even on possession, pretty even on territory. And what's been the difference? Like Old Glory's sense of urgency and taking those opportunities on those penalties quickly and just moving the ball through the hands and finding those gaps and getting through just like Baker did, just finding those opportunities to get over the line. Chicago just needs to go ahead, up the tempo a bit, and try to get over this try line. Overthrow. Oh, what, a, what a play. Nicely handled. Here's Strom. Gets it on the outside. Chicago forced back into their own end, trying to get back into this match. They need tries, and they need tries in a hurry. There's a kick into space, and you're just going to turn the ball over. Oh. It's going to be a knock advantage being played, and a scrum down to Chicago. Yeah, not a bad option for Chicago. This is the second time they've gone to that high ball. This time, it was contestable. So you put that thing within 15 meters, 20 meters up in the air instead of 40, and you get pressure like that on Baker, and sometimes you cause that turnover. That's a better high ball for Chicago. They get the turnover. But again, they've got to go ahead and make something happen on attack. They can't rely on that kick game. Take another look. Here's the up and under. And just going down the pitch, it looks like Probably around 20 meter kick, but the chase was there. Your kick is only as good as its chase, and the pressure gets that turnover. All right, here's Chicago. Now back in DC territory. Basco looking to put it in. 37 17 here in the nation's capital in favor of the hometown. Oh, and Danny Tusatala almost picked that one off. But Chicago maintains possession. Here's O'Keefe darting, dashing to the ground. Luke White, he'll have a rumble. Cardi looking outside. You hear the referee barking at DC on behalf of the Hounds. Yes, you play about it, brother. Big run by Luke Campbell, who's getting Luke White, I beg your pardon, getting into the back line. Bryce Campbell skips it out. It's corralled by Mark O'Keefe. Number 13. Allows it to be taken by his teammates. Basca. O'Keefe again. Desperation as Strum gets involved. Good defense from DC. Advantage to Chicago. Thrown away a little bit. Here's Matina. Looking for something, some kind of crack. Good solid defense from DC. We'll go back to the original infraction. Not rolling away. Offsides. But you see Chicago going to work. It just, to me, it seems like the ball's coming slow from the ruck a little bit. The Old Glory's doing a great job reloading their defense, getting into that ruck, slowing the ball down, you know, allowing the defense to reload and work off the ball and launch a defensive attack. I just feel like if Chicago could just up the tempo, have a hard charging runner, get a little go for it, and nuke that, that ruck and move the ball quickly, they're going to have. Better results. Right, keep in mind, a couple of key playmakers for Chicago because of paperwork issues are not here today, and that's Billy Meeks and Julian Dominguez. And th those two players will make a significant difference in that back line. But right now, it is all old glory, and they are playing well. But here comes a crashing try. And it looks like it's number 17. 
Laurent, oh, that's, that's Hugh Roche off the bench and making an impact in a hurry. We talked about the reserves at the beginning of this match. Hugh Roche coming in with some big minutes there, getting the dot down, but you saw that off the lineup. You saw how quickly they had the ball back. Take another look at it here. There's the pill, digging in, moving it away quickly. Here's the tackle, big hard runner. The ball's there presented and moving away quickly, and that's what opens up those half gaps to get those big runners, getting their legs pumping, their pistons going over the line. You've got to have quick ball at the goal line. Chicago doing a great, better job having that sense of urgency at the breakdown, and they get their just deserves for putting in the effort. Not sure if it was Charlie Abel that actually got the try. Roche was there in support. He's just off the bench, and he is a he's a he's a ball of fire. That that Roche. Okay. Yeah, and it was Charlie Abel that that did get that try. But Hugh Roche, right in the mix of it. And now is a counter, and here comes Old Glory on defense, trying to keep Chicago in their own end. Hold on to your hats. We might have a, a match here, Colin. Yeah, that's the uh, keys to victory for Old Glory. Starting, starting well, coming out the second half well. Can they play a full 80? There's a kick into the air. Under pressure, taken nicely by DC. Quickly, you know, this is now a 17-point game, which could, is somewhat manageable. If you're Sam Harrisico, especially if you get a turnover gifted to you just like that one. There's that man, Hugh Roche. Mike DeWall. The Lindenwood product. All-American. 185 tackles last year, DeWall had. Spread out. Here comes Strom. Well done by Debulis on defense, and it trickles it to touch, and it's going to be a line out awarded on that tackle by the chicken. Jersey Mike Debulis. Yeah, just a knock on in the tackle there looked like great defense from Old Glory. As we felt, Chicago, like somebody lit a little fire underneath them to go ahead and start playing the ball quickly. Nice ball out the back spot, ball skip pass out to the edge. A little bit of space from the ice defense, just giving up that soft corner. It's just got to end well if you're that winger on the opposite side, Caleb Strum. You've got to go ahead and make a move, get back on the inside, understand you're not going to score the try. You go ahead and have a strong run, play a phase, and bring that ball back to the inside to a couple of hard charging forwards. All right, let's go down to Roley. Roley, what do you got? Yeah, guys, just quick mention for the tall blonde winger for Chicago on the other side, Caleb Strum. Caleb is actually a local product from Winchester, Virginia. Went to the University of Alabama as a seven standout. And now he makes his way to Chicago and is getting his first ever start in MLR. Good on him. Good on him. Good on you. Thank you, Roly. As a rolling mall takes place to Satala, takes it off. He's got threatened Palamo inside. Colin, I think they swapped jerseys at 12 and 13 before the game, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's on the teleprompter. It was different. Tusatala puts the ball up in the air. There's Strum again, who Roley just told us about. Getting his run with Chicago. Nice fake inside, taking with Mac Jones to the ground. Krishnan. Large man. Switch dummy fake inside. There's Matina getting the ball outside. O'Keefe. Chicago showing some life despite being down 17 points and on the road. Approaching our 54th minute of this match. Old Glory's been very impressive so far. We'll skip. Into the hands of Matina. Oh, on the oh. outside, strong, but did. Yikes. Trying to run before he had the ball. A little frustration. He threw 
Diaz Benita, <laughs> Benita down on the ground. But I absolutely love that from Chicago. They didn't use the up and under. They've been using that at midfield. They went ahead and spun that ball wide. They maintained possession, got the ruck, moved it back to the other side. They actually had a ton of players on their feet on the corner, and they just cut this ball to hand. Look at all that space and one to beat. You know, you put a winger in that one-on-one -on -one scenario, and you know, more often than not, he gets it, he off puts him. But that kind of pattern from Chicago is exactly how they need to play. Hit that opposite side, hit some forward runners in the middle, chop up that defensive line from recycling, and you got those opportunities on the opposite end. And if Strump can hold on to that, he's got Hugh Roach right behind him. Unlucky for Chicago. Unlucky indeed. Here comes Tusitala. Awaiting the cadence call from Anselmi. Tusitala takes it from the side. He's threatened Palamo. Putting his head down. Great run. Spun outside. Oh, Glory with a nice kick, and that's going to find touch. And going to touch, rather. Great positioning, great kick. That's a great job by Baker. He got a bad, yeah, bad ball in the middle of the backfield. So Wait. when you spin that ball out wide, you bring that winger up on the outside. So have another look. The ball hits the deck. One out. That winger comes up. You see his shadow in the back end of the field. Opens up that pocket of space right behind that winger. Hard to go ahead and ship that ball out to the outside backs and then put it on the foot. But that's the experience of Baker with the skill set to be able to do that. And that's the old 50-22 kick. Sushan. Try score earlier. Now throws it in. See if he gets it back. He does. Washington driving. And driving. So Sean gets it to Tusitala, who keeps it wisely. He is Bonilla. The counter attack. Good attack from DC. They maintain possession. Martinez. Three one for DC. The old house money. Like a delayed penalty in ice hockey. Back inside, Debulis. And that's going to be another. No, we're going to go back to the original. There might be two penalties here. Lots of scrappy, chippy play there. You saw Kurt Baker on the deck. Something was going on, but we're going back for the penalty. Side entry into the mall, says the referee. <laughs> Bunch of penalties in there. You had a lot to choose from. Yeah, you got to come in from the back. Cool. You got to come in through the gate, through the gate, right? You can't come in on the side when you're going in there. All right, so maybe a little bit desperate trying to get the ball. Pop free. By the way, Patty Ryan, number 18, is in for Old Glory DC. He's been around this league and back. Tusitala oh, with some wow. fancy footwork, and Danny Tusitala <laughs> wow. sneaks himself into the try zone for Old Glory, and that might be the one that makes it too much for Chicago. An absolute snake. After that right foot step, it's just so deadly from Tusitala. Wow, maybe stunning the defense with a little whip of that hair, but go ahead, nice dart in the line out up front, and great push by Chicago right away, and here's the breakout. Tusitala finds a little bit of half gap. We talked about it earlier. You give him a sniff, a little bit of an opening right there by the breakdown. He's going to take it, but having a look, nice push by Chicago, broke out early, and right there, over pursuit by that Chicago defense. You've got to push up with that heat on the inside, opens up that gap, support from the from that mall, it's not there. They're still locked in, and Tusitala, just great vision, and the skills go ahead and take advantage of it. And that movie put on Beecham was just cruel. Ooh. That was cruel. <laughs> Absolutely dangerous. All right, here's Diaz Bonilla. Lining up the conversion. Again, a perfect day in the nation's capital for rugby. And what a day for an old glory fan. Let's go, Rizzo. Get one. And the 
kick slides to the left. Sneaking around it all game. And there's the man. The absolutely electric hairdo with such a violent, dangerous right foot step to get him over the line. And that guy's just pure class. So a couple of things for Chicago to play for here. You can get a couple of bonus points in a loss, right? So you can get that four tries or you can get within seven. So there is plenty for them to play for in the remainder of this match. So it all comes down to points. And we saw last year how tight the races were in both conferences. Here's Strom taking on a tackler. Nice pass back inside by Mac Jones to keep that alive. That was some play by the number seven. Strum's first game, but that switch back inside the hole opened up. Oh, crushing tackle. And stop by DC. There's Patty Ryan. Formerly with San Diego, formerly with Austin and New York. He had two trips down to Austin and two iterations of that club. Here's number 19, Matarazzo, the Staten Island product. Two-time captain of Notre Dame. Chicago not showing any quit whatsoever, as you'd expect from a Sam Harris team. Matina looks back inside. Nice no-look pass from Beecham. Basket of Luke White. Luke White can't handle it. And it's going to be a knock-on. Advantage being played. Bavaro takes it. And a kick into space. That was, oh, what a wonderful play. Wonderful kick. Was that Rizzo off the bench with that kick? I, I got to check that. I'm going to get a name to that number, but what an absolute turn of events. We'll find out who that kick was from. But in the meantime, we got a quick break. Don't go away. We have an exciting last period for you in just a moment. Welcome back. Welcome back to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Segra Field, where the home team, Old Glory, D.C., lead 42-20. And what a spectacular play kick we had just recently before we took the break. Just sublime, Colin. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Taking advantage of it. There, advantage was being played. Looked like Chicago stopped playing there, but... Just putting that ball over, and that's but went Old Glory the entire game. All these penalties, all these change in possessions, they've just capitalized on every single one of them. You note the number 16 is in for Old Glory. Gaddis, a very good hooker and arguably a starting hooker on a lot of teams. So there's some depth at that position for Old Glory this season. There's a little pop kick, but it finds touch directly. So it's going to go back, and a quick line out taken by. Bryce Campbell, the captain, still firing on all cylinders. Here comes Chicago. Again, they have an opportunity to get a bonus point for being within seven or scoring four tries. And on the outside. And that is, indeed is number 23, John Rizzo in for Old Glory DC. And he's one of those generational families in America. Dad Jay Rizzo, Fishhook Rizzo, as many know him, watching. And they're from the Chicago area, or from Chicago. 
and he's playing for D.C. Ball's out. Chicago again. Just trying to get into that try zone, chip away at that lead. There's plenty of time, just under 20 minutes left. And it's going to be a knock on in traffic again. Uh, lucky for Chicago. Uh, I'm loving what they're doing right now in terms of, you know, getting some hard runners into the midfield, chopping off that defensive line, and they're really finding a lot of, a lot of space on the outside, not choosing to spin that ball out wide, but. You know, a couple of knock-ons in traffic. Just ball security not there. I think the last one when Chicago was on a run, it was Luke White. And just, you know, they get ahead of steam, and those knock-ons are just momentum killers. Yeah, Beecham had taken it to the ground, and then his teammate just couldn't find a handle trying to get into that try zone. And, you know, you're playing a little desperate. Hey, let's go down to Roly on the pitch. Thanks, guys. Um, I did get the opportunity to speak with Coach Sims just before, uh, just excuse me, just after the halftime break. He was incredibly happy with that first half, obviously. The big thing that he mentioned to me was that they had a specific uh, job in that tw first 20 minutes was to stay in the game because last year they went behind early in practically every game. Not only did they stay in the game, they went out and took the lead and uh, have continued to just grind it out ever since playing some fantastic rugby. Back up to you guys. Excellent stuff, Roly. Thank you. And we've got another substitution in, number 23 for Chicago. Dancing into a big hit. <laughs> right off the pitch, that is Kevin Morgan, the pride of Saranac, New York, where the Can-Am tournament has taken place, and that Morgan family, his dad, Sean, his father, John, they've got to be excited. Yeah, Kevin Morgan getting in there, but running into Baker and Rizzo. Yeah. Okay. And Baker getting bottled up into touch from going too high into contact. And Baker's like, I know what this is. This happened earlier in the game. And again, the awareness around that body height and contact. Nice move inside out. Double up here, and that's the pinch on the bulk here and just driving to touch and getting that turnover. Great defensive effort. Kevin's a great story uh, on the USA 7's radar. He was a scrum half. But he's a, such a rugby player that he could basically play, play anywhere. He's been playing with Nyack, New York Athletic Club, and now he's on the wing. Again, a great story, like John Rizzo of Chicago. Of D.C., I beg your pardon. Chicago with the ball. Luke White uses all six foot five of that frame to catch that pass. Sean. Jakubian is now taking over the scrum half position for Chicago, and there's a whistle. Off the feet is the call against D.C., so Bryce Campbell's team will have a penalty awarded to them. Yeah, you've got about 15 minutes left in this match and a mountain to climb. I just want to see the sense of urgency for Chicago right now. You don't got a lot of time to spare. There's the kick into touch, so they'll have the line out. Again, they can get that four tries. Who do they have? How many do they have now, Colin? I'm going to put you on the spot. Hey. <laughs> we got well, we know they've got two. We'll have our crack production staff get us that answer in a second, but in the meantime, you've got another substitution, number 16, number 17. Lerome White oh, is on, in for Chicago as well. There's a big hitting and contact. There's number 19, Matarazzo. There's a top baseball player from Staten Island as well as a rugby player for Notre Dame. No, 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 no. Chicago trying to get something out of this match. They need a bonus point in that tight Western Conference. Nice look back inside, O'Keefe. I like that spot ball at the back, it's just too deep. When you're that deep, that, that drift defense from DC can just drift across, it's easily defended. You've gotta come up to the line, you've gotta come around that corner a bit harder. 
Take another look at the play. That is great shape from Chicago. You got some dummy runners, a bit pedantic, but look how deep this line is from the spot ball. And just the drift defense from DC, it's too easy for that guy to come over and have that drift defense and cover. When you come around that corner through that back line, you got to come and change that angle and get closer to that line. Colin Holly using pedantic, the sesquipedalian word of the day here <laughs> on TRN. <laughs> All right, the line, in, the line out. It's going to be Hugh Roach, who is really a stellar player off the bench. I mean, he could start for most teams. A big crashing run from Luke White, and he finds Pater. Luke White, what a run! He looked like twinkle toes into the try zone, and that's what you want from the Hounds. Big, strong runner, Luke White, coming up, experienced player, finds finds a seam. And that's what you want from Chicago. You want those attacking players, those big runners at the line, taking the ball at pace. Take another look. And this ball just on the line, flat pass to a hard charging runner. And that's what you get when you have you know, this dynamic attack that's running you know, these, these knife lines at the line, finding a bit of space. And nobody's going to stop that wrecking ball wow. down to that line with that amount of you know, momentum. You know, this is, might be the obvious thing to say, but they need more of that. They could have used it earlier, but they've had a couple of knock-ons, key crucial knock-ons deep in Washington territory. As Cardi lines this one up, and it's great to see Luke Cardi healthy again. No, no, no. And... Chicago's conversion is good. Conversion is good. That Cardi limping right there. That's Maybe the third pulled. try for Chicago, by the way, Colin. Pulled a bit of something there on that yeah. kick. He's Ooh. not looking good. He's grimacing. That's bad news for Chicago. I just got done saying how it's great to see him healthy. And there it is. Oh, boy. I hate to see that. Absolutely hate to see that. But now here's Chicago with the ball. If they can get a try, they can get a bonus point in this loss, if it is indeed a loss. But with about 11 minutes left, sure looks like Old Glory's gonna hold on to the lead and they're gonna hold on to the ball on that turnover to Satala. Getting a little help from number 18, Calixto Martinez in for Old Glory. Oh, wow. Look at right into the open, that's number 17, Quentin Newcomer. His eyes were bulging, he saw the try line, but he turned it over and there's a kick back to give some breathing room for Chicago. Oh, and here's a quick line out by DC. And a kick is made and it doesn't find touch, no. Chaotic sequence here. Part about playing 80 minutes if you're old glory is maintaining possession. You lost the ball on contact, you're playing it quick. You just pop this ball in the touch on the full. So you've got 10 minutes left in this game. You're up 42-27, you played a brilliant match. Stay composed, you're ahead. Go ahead and finish this out and just show some discipline at the end of this match to play that full 80 we talked about. All right, we've got a substitution for Cardi. Looks like it's going to, is it Sam Perry? There's a kick, and oh, kept in bounds. Well done by Chicago. Chicago needs that try. Marco Keith takes the ricochet off of Beecham's foot. Ball is squirted out. That looked like it might have been knocked on by Tusatala, but no play on. Here's Newcomer, the former Free Jack. Now looking for some room is Tito Diaz Bonilla. He takes it to the turf after running a little east-west. Passed off the ground right to threaten Palamo. Well, There's Martinez, Cali Martinez, 
with the carry. Play on. There's the Diaz Benitez kick. Benia kick into touch, and it'll be a Chicago lineout. Good fight from Chicago. Playing good defense. Yes, brother. A lot of tired bodies out there. It's been an absolute battle on both sides of the ball. Numbers, boys. And, and you know, it, it's got to be said that Numbers. Chicago <laughs> hasn't been together that long, right? I mean, they were assembled in, in basically a month. Um, an excellent job by James English and the ownership group, including Phil Groves and Darren Morris, the Welsh rugby legend. Yeah, you can tell Chicago's got great shape. They've got a bunch of bodies in the right positions. It's just, you know, that extra second or two at the ruck or a little bit of execution here and there to really push this thing over the top of Chicago. I mean, you saw Luke White's try, and when they actually get it going for two of their tries, showed a bunch of runners and quick ball from the ruck. A bit more of that, this, this game's different. And they were awarded the penalty and now taking the kicking duties is Chris Matina. And that's another thing about a Chris Matina. He just slots in wherever you need him and he can kick. Always great to have a Matina, a, a utility player we like to call him, where he can pretty much slot in anywhere. He's the only Manhattan born and bred player in the league. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Phenomenal. Don't be snotty. <laughs> Line out taken by Chicago. Bryce Campbell, the captain, crashes into a couple of tacklers. O'Keefe in traffic, wiggles his way further. Lerome White. Right there, there was a miscue. A four was trying to pick the ball up. The nine wanted it at the same time. That second slowdown, that's big. Chicago desperately trying to maintain possession. They cough it up, and it's kicked away and into touch. A great <laughs> kick by Diaz Bonilla. Wow. About six minutes left in this one. And we still have something to play for because of the point system, right? That's what makes this league so great. Might be a lopsided score on the scoreboard, but at the end of the day, it's all about points. At the end of the season, it's all about points. And we saw how tight it was last year. Here's Hugh Roach with the throw in. Taken by Monterazzo. Is a unit. Large man. Nice run by Chris Matina. Splitting the defense. And now pummeling the, the defense. Bobby Dice. Bryce Campbell. There's Sam Perry. Number 20. Looking to get the ball back, but they go to Matina instead, who looks to be playing fly half for the injured Luke Carter. No, no, no. Stop it. Chicago in white, DC in red, white, and blue, if you're just tuning in. This has been an exciting match to watch as a rugby fan. It looks like we got Fonano Schultz holding his shoulder on the outside, the captain. Chicago again, just want to repeat phases, get that ball, maintain possession, get that critical point. Here's Kevin Morgan, the Mountaineers hero on the outside with the ball. Patty Ryan back inside. The Mountaineers have a watch party up in Saranac. That's got to be fun. Chicago on the outside. Dakota Worth trying to square wow. but he can. He is repelled with some vicious defense from Old Glory, not wavering. Campbell, can he get it in? Oh, so close to the bonus point try. Matina wisely keeps it. 
Gets the ball down, and now can it be punched in? DeWall, Mike DeWall, can he get in? No, it's a wall of defense, yes, no. And it's being taken out by Bavaro. Oh, wow, DC. This is end-to-end -end hockey, Colin Foley. My watch, and it's in my watch. DC just <laughs> ripped the heart out of Chicago fans in terms of that bonus point for the try. And after the knock on, it'll be a scrum down to DC. Here it is. Take a look at Tusitala just dipping down there, trying to get his hands on the pill. And just not sure what happens out the back. Referee slow to get around. Let's take a look at this angle, see if we can see something. There's the scrap, the fight for the pill. And where does it come? Oh, there's the ball oh, just squirts boy. out there. Wow. And then with the presence of mind to run it out of your own try zone and come down this far, right? It just seems like Chicago has been time and time again knocking on the door for a try. And just DC, credit to their scramble defense. The way they're working off the ball and reloading has been absolutely impressive this match. Colin, no pressure, but I'm going to put it on you to come up with a couple of choices for player of the match. As Tusitala takes it out of the back, and he's got to be a candidate. He's threatened Palamo. <laughs> playing a full match. You've got, you've got to love no, threatening no, no, Palamo no. playing a full match if you are DC. That usually is a good sign. Stay wide, stay, stay. And it has boded well for Old Glory today. <laughs> There's a kick up. And it's built backwards, though. So it's still alive by Eloff wearing the scrum cap. Cleaned up stay wide. by stay, Morgan. Deep to Rizzo. I beg your pardon. Diaz Benita. Benia. I'll get it right. Stay, stay right. And time running out on Chicago's hopes of that bonus point, but DC just ruthless. Ball went backwards, not a knock on. Play on, says Anselmi. Nice look outside. Oh, wow. Great pass. What a pass from Fermin Martinez. But now it's a penalty awarded to Chicago. Colin, who are our player of the match candidates? I mean, we've got to go with number nine, Danny Tusitala. The man's touched the ball more than anybody on the pitch. He's got to try, set up a couple others. His kicks have been great. His defense has been great. Just Let's really impressed with him. And 15, Kurt Baker, having him back there at the 15 position with those high balls, he's got to try to his name already. Just his ability to go ahead and play make on the back end. Really impressed with these two guys on the day. Uh, truly, if you take Danny Tusitala out of this match, it's definitely different. He has been all over the pitch. His fitness is great. His defense has been there. Just two t stellar performance by those two backs. Excellent selections. I know what my vote is. The guy with the cooler Play hair. On, <laughs> but we'll get back to that in a moment as That's Chicago potentially with this last possession of the game, if they can get into the try zone, they can get a point. So patience is what they need right now. As Dakota Worth takes it to the ground and it is kicked and it finds touch and it trickles in to touch. So you kicked away possession. And you kicked away the opportunity to get a bonus point. But in the meantime, on the other side of things, the hometown fans for Old Glory DC have to be thrilled <laughs> with this performance. And what a performance it was. You know, watching this team last season is just how close they were to putting in awesome performances like we saw in game one of season six. They were just sniffing it all last season, had moments of brilliance from that man, Danny Tusitala right there, and a couple other complimentary backs and forwards. And you just saw something different with the Old Glory DC in this match. There was a sense of urgency. There was a, you know, a confidence and moving that ball quickly and taking the opportunities on offer. 
and just they were all on the same page. Just incredible stuff. And if you're Chicago, you know, like you said, coming together a couple months ago, you know, brand new team in in this season, Major League Rugby coming out and trying to trying to get a victory. They've got a lot of the components there that look fantastic. I mean, when they had the ball in the hand with those big runners in O'Keefe and Campbell and White, I mean, they looked powerful and dangerous. I would just like to see them as this, you know, season progresses, a little more sense of urgency around the ruck area, moving that ball quicker. You know, you get a second shave off of that ruck time and you get these guys moving. It's a different game. And you add the likes of a Billy Meeks and a Julian uh, Dominguez. Can't forget about Billy. In the back line. Julio. Those guys you know. are completely dangerous playmakers. And it just seemed like they needed those guys to open up the game, those ballers and, you know, X-Factor guys to break it open for them. You know, but, but to be fair, 